Well, glory. Welcome to Healing Help. I'm Pastor Virgil, and uh, we're making these videos for the purpose of helping you to receive healing and helping others to receive healing through you. Uh, several years ago, the, the Lord spoke to me and said, we have some holes in our doctrine of divine healing. And we've been identifying some of those places that are pitfalls for us as we try to believe God to receive the healing that's provided for us in the scriptures. And the, uh, the three areas that we identified were uh, the area of identity, knowing who we are uh, in our relationship with God and uh, through the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, our in him realities. Uh, number two, in the areas of faith, do we allow those things to become uh, something other than receiving by grace through faith? Uh, do we lapse into religious works? And then thirdly, in the area of community, have we uh, become too individualistic in the way we approach these things and uh, we're leaving each other on an island when we ought to be all on it together. So uh, we're looking right now at some things about our identity in Christ. Remember, we've been talking about the love of God. We saw in, in 1 John chapter 3 where John said, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the sons of God. He said, take a look. The word behold, I always say, you know, I, I rarely walk into the house and tell my wife, Judy, behold. Uh, uh, when, when God says behold, that means I want you to really look at this. This is a strange kind of love that the Father has given to us. Uh, John 3.16, love, loves the whole world. That uh, same love was extended to Hitler as it was to you. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ was offered for your sins. But once you received that, he gave you the power to become sons of God, John chapter 1 and verse 12, where he lets us know that now we've become family and God is our Father. So we've been looking at what it means to have God as a father. We want to see it through his eyes. We want to know what he means when he says that, not what we think about earthly fathers. So what does he mean? In uh, 1 John chapter 3, he said, uh, you know, it doesn't yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we'll be like him, for we'll see him as he is. Your heavenly father is moving you forward and being transformed into his very image. Over in Hebrews chapter 12, uh, there's a wonderful passage of Scripture talking about uh, what we usually refer to as the chastening or the correction of the Lord. It sounds ominous somehow, doesn't it? But uh, in verse 9 of that chapter, it says, Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they, that is our human, our fathers of the flesh, our earthly fathers, they chastened us for a few days as it seemed best to them. But he, that is God, corrects us for our profit so that we may be partakers of his holiness. Remember, your heavenly father is not like your earthly father, your father of the flesh. Get that out of your mind, but look at what the, the Bible says about God's fatherhood. It says here he's the father of spirits. Remember over in John chapter 3, uh, when uh, Nicodemus came to visit Jesus to ask him, uh, you know, we, we know that you, you're, you're weird because we see the miracles that you're doing. Uh, so what, what exactly is going on? And, and Jesus said, uh, well, you've got to be born again. And after he told him that, of course, Nicodemus kind of flipped out. He didn't know what that meant. You know, I have to get back in the womb? You know, religious people think strange. But, but Jesus said, wait a minute. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So what's he saying? No, you don't go back in your mother's womb. That was flesh. You don't go back in your fleshly mother's womb in order to be born again. Uh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. What's he saying? You've been born of the Spirit. You're a child of the Father of spirits. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. What's that mean? That means you are spirit. Your Heavenly Father is the Father of spirits. In John chapter 4, he tells us God is spirit. So when God is working in us uh, to, perf to move us in the direction of being more like him, that we can be partakers of his holiness, uh, he's correcting us, changing us, transforming us through the spirit, not through the flesh. Holiness is the term that defines the character of the nature of God more than any other word. God is holy. Remember when the angels were flying around the throne over in Isaiah chapter 6? They flew around the throne singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Uh, 
He is physically, the word holy means separate or different. That God who was completely separate, set apart from all the creation. He was the creator and he, he uh, in no way was the creation. Nothing in him was created. He's holy. He said that holiness nature uh, defines who he is. But when Jesus came to earth and took on a physical body, the holy God who is separateness, who is different, took on a body so that he could partake of our tests and trials and challenges and become a perfect sacrifice for our failings. And now, by means of that sacrifice and by the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, it says here, he wants you to be a partaker of his holiness. Sometimes we take the word holiness and turn it into all kinds of religious things. But one aspect of holiness is that we receive his nature. That nature is holiness. It's not our holiness. It's not my haircut or the length of my skirt. But it's the, it, it's the nature on the inside of me that reflects the fact that I am a child of God. God is my father. And I'm becoming more and more like him every day as he works in me. His aim is to make you as much like him on the outside as you already are on the inside. Second Peter chapter 1 uh, <clears throat> is one of the most powerful passages of Scripture, I think, in the whole Bible. In uh, verse 3, it says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Think about that for a minute. In order to live for God in this life and reflect His nature, you already have everything you need because He gave it to you. He said He did that through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. He called his glory and his goodness called out to us and said, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That calling and our response to it allows us to know God in such a way that we can live a godly life. He said, through these, that is his glory and goodness, he has given us his great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. I love that translation. You can participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption that's in the world caused by your evil desires. Notice, he changes you by his spirit. That happens by the great and precious promises that is his word. 2 Timothy 3.16, he said, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. He transforms us using his word by his spirit. 2 Corinthians 3.18 tells us very clearly that we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed. You are being transformed. While we're sitting here today, you're hearing me read the scriptures, you're hearing me talk about the goodness and glory of God. You are at this moment being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. He's not using, listen to me now, he's not using disease to correct you and change you. He's not using pain and distress to make you more like him. He's not teaching you through misfortune. His spirit and his word are more than enough. This week I want you to pray that his word will open up to you in a new and a living way and that the nature of God will be revealed to you and that as it is, you'll be transformed because you will see him as he is. I don't care what your parents were like. I don't care what your granddaddy died of. Generational curses ended when you were born again and got a new daddy, your new daddy is not sick and you have his DNA. This week, I want you to take time to pray and ask the Lord to open those things up to you. Also, if you get a moment, look at pastorvirgil.com and you can find a lot of these teachings in a written form there. Uh, you can also Google hashtag healing help. Why do we do all this? Because God wants you healed. So do we.